My name is Shelley Adair. I'm from Novato, California. I'm a victim of family court corruption. My civil rights and my right to a fair trial was violated and my 14th Amendment due process uh, was violated. Child abuse has become a multi-billion dollar industry. This phenomenon of placing innocent children in the hands of the physically, sexually abusive parent is plaguing our family courts throughout the nation today in the U.S. in 2012. Court-ordered child abuse has become the biggest cancer in our system that is metastasizing. The family courts are trafficking children to the highest bidder as child abuse has become the biggest source of revenue and profits for the courts. They are, in, they are endangering lives in staggering numbers, 58,000 a year. This judicial malfeasance, corruption, and collusion by the judges, mediators, DAs, minors counsel, et cetera, is pervasive and must be stopped, and our children must be heard, believed, and most of all, protected. This is a travesty of justice and is so commonplace today in our family courts. There is no humanity left in our court system when we are putting profits over children's protection and their basic human right to be protected from violence. Judges and the like all have total judicial immunity and total impunity, therefore they get away with making these dangerous, egregious decisions that detrimentally impact children's lives forever. Until there is transparency and accountability in the court system and judicial immunity is abolished, these atrocities will continue. This happened with my daughters that are three and five years old, Allison and Sarah, were given to their sexual, physical abuser, the father, while he was on probation for child endangerment and I was placed on supervised visitation for protecting my children. It all started in November of 2010 when my daughter had a conversation with her grandpa outside on the porch while watching the deer and out of the blue, she told her grandpa that her daddy was hurting her and he asked her how he was hurting her and she said he is putting her, his finger in her pee pee. Her grandpa said, you need to go inside and tell your grandma what you just told me as I was not home at the time. So she did. The following day, grandma said, you have to tell you, have you told your mommy yet? And she said, no. Grandma then said, we need to tell your mommy. She said, well, it's a secret. And grandma asked her who told her that it was a secret and she said her daddy. She eventually told me that her daddy put his finger in her pee pee and several other horrific things like he bit her on her breast, he licked her pee pee, he touched his pee pee with her pee pee. I then told my attorney at the time what my daughter had disclosed and he said since we had already brought physical abuse abuse allegations to the court that it wasn't wise to also bring sexual abuse allegations as it might backfire in my case. I incredulously listened. He recommended that I put her into therapy right away, which is what I did. My daughter revealed abuse by her father to the, her therapist right away, which was documented in a letter of support written by her therapist stating that her daddy hits her on the head, once threw her down the stairs, calls her an asshole, and when asked if he touched her in a way that she didn't like, she looked at her lap. The therapist then said, are you referring to your private area? And she said yes. These disclosures of my daughter set everything in motion as the therapist is a mandatory reporter of child abuse. The therapist then contacted Children and Family Services and made a su suspected child abuse report. CFS then called the police in Contra Costa County as this is where the crime took place and this is the proper jurisdiction. The Contra Costa P Sheriff's Department then became involved. They did a short investigation and over the course of three weeks and basically closed the case. The detective told me not to release my kids to the father for the three week investigation, which was only about one weekend of visits for the father. They interviewed my daughter at the Children's Interview Center by herself, 
without her mother present. And I learned at the day of the trial, when I examined the detective, that my daughter did disclose in the interview that her daddy did sexually molest her and touch her pee pee. Which he, initially, after the interview with my daughter, he told me that my daughter did not disclose anything to them and therefore the police could not step in because of that. This case was essentially closed by the police. The visits resumed unsupervised with their convicted child abuser father. My children came home from a visit with their father once again and my daughter was in excruciating pain in her private area. She told me and her grandparents that her father had put his finger in her pee pee again. I called her pediatrician once again after he examined her previously and found irritation and redness back in November December of 2011. The investigation was reopened. Her pediatrician recommended that I take her to the emergency room, so I did, in Novato, California. They found a small tear in her vagina and extreme redness, and she disclosed the sexual abuse to the nurse and the ER doctor as well, which was notated in the hospital report. The ER doctor suggested for the children strongly suggested that the children not be in the care of the father at all, especially when there was a criminal investigation underway. And I was under a strict order to release my children back to their abuser, even when a criminal investigation was underway. The next day I demanded that the detective Xavier Shabazz get my daughter into a sexual assault response team exam as the police did not order it the night that she was at the hospital. The police, which were in the city where I lived, in Novato, were ready to take us to the SART exam. However, the sergeant in Contra Costa County, Sergeant Baker, told the Novato police not to take us. In any event, they examined my daughter at the SART exam and found extreme redness in her private area and bruising on her buttocks, which the child abuse specialist confirmed as physical abuse. The SART nurse interviewed my daughter while she was on my lap and asked her a series of questions like, when the stuff came out of his pee-pee, where did it go? She replied, my belly. She asked her if he touched her pee-pee with his pee-pee, and she said yes. She asked her if he kissed her on any part of her body, and she said yes, on my bottom. During one of our supervised visits, my other daughter, Sarah, who is three, disclosed that her father put something in her bottom. This was reported to Children and Family Services once again by the supervised monitor. The case was referred to the Contra Costa Sheriff's Department again, and they investigated and then closed and dropped the case. I filed papers with the court to have visits with the father to be supervised, and the judge did grant the order to have the visits supervised, but ordered me to pay $1,000 a month for visits and for, to, and for me to bring my children anywhere the father chooses which was a three-hour trip each way, twice a week, with two toddlers. We eventually had a trial to try and prove these allegations, and since I was pro se and represented myself, the judge, Joyce, Joyce Cram, and Minors Counsel, Judith Lawrence, and the detective, Xavier Shabazz, all lied, suppressed evidence, and manipulated evidence. The Minors Counsel did not represent my daughter, but rather represented the father and came to his defense on many occasions. The judge claimed that I lied and coached my daughter in order to interfere with the father's visitation. The father was on supervised visitation up until the weekend of the trial. The day of the trial, the judge radically switched custody from me, their protective parent, to the convicted child abuser and ripped the children out of my lives like I was a criminal. I have always been my children's primary caregiver and their rock since birth. I have always been a law-abiding citizen and nev have never been convicted of a crime. My daughter disclosed her abuse to several professionals, including her pediatrician, her therapist, the social worker, the police in the child-conducted interview, the ER doctor and the ER nurse, the SART doctor, the SART nurse, 
her grandparents, a family friend, and myself. However, I am visiting my girls in a supervised setting only twice a week for a total of three and a half hours a week, and the convicted child abuser has full legal and physical custody of my two children. The father, Bruce Adair, was on probation for child abuse with his older daughter from another relationship at the time of the custody switch. This is a violation of Family Code Section 3044. My children are suffering immensely and cry and cry to be with their mother. We have reached out to so many and nobody has protected my children. Not the judge, not the police, not children and family services, everyone that is supposed to protect children. I have been punished for protecting my children. I have been treated like a criminal while I visit my children in a monitored setting. We all know that it's a crime and a felony to not protect your children and remain silent. This has been a double-edged sword, however, I know in my heart that I have done the right thing by my children and they will know this one day.